Hi, welcome to this complete beginner whittling lesson. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to choose your first whittling knife. By the end of this video, you will be able to identify features of a good beginner whittling knife and select a knife that will meet your needs. We're going to do that by first looking at what to look for in a knife. We're going to talk about the blade, ease of sharpening, handle comfort, things to avoid. And then I'm going to share three specific recommendations. So let's get start with what to look for in a blade. I have three knives out here already. And I'm going to talk about length first. These three knives are all one and a half inch blades. And I would say that one and a half is inappropriate, if not the most appropriate beginner length for a beginner whittler. Uh, it's long enough to do some real roughing cuts and it's uh, short enough that you can get up to the point of it in order to do more detailed cuts. Now in general I would say something between one and a quarter and one and three quarters will probably uh, be good for you. Anything smaller than one and a quarter uh, is going to be too small and only only going to work well for detail. Anything larger than one and a quarter is going to be too large for you to really get in and do a lot of detail. You certainly can, and carvers do, uh, and I do, but uh, as a beginner, I think one and a half is your best bet. But a range between one and a quarter and one and three quarters is good. The next thing I'll note is that uh, if you haven't used a whittling knife before, you're looking for something with a relatively thin blade. And all three of these knives that I have here have good uh, thin blades. The thin blade helps a lot when you're pushing your knife through wood. It just slides through a lot easier than a thicker blade might. Uh, I can uh, tell you that is much thinner than you would expect to see on like your average pocket knife. Uh, you can see the, the thickness there. And it's thinner than what you would expect to see on some, uh, even some knives that are sold uh, for, for whittling. So that's something to note. Uh, the next thing to note is that you're looking for something that has a strong spine as well as a pointed tip uh, for details. And what that means is it's going to do well for rough cuts, which is going to be your larger, deeper cuts. And so it's got strength back here but that it comes to a good point. And there's two ways to, to think about the way it comes to the point. One is that if I look at the thickness from the back of the blade to the tip, it's getting narrower towards the point, right? I can see that on all three of those blades. If, in contrast, I show you this pocket knife blade, uh, it does get a little bit thinner towards the tip, but not nearly as thin, right? The other way to think about that is that detail point, uh, which comes down to a sharp point at the at the front. You want an angle coming into it. Um, if it's overly blunt, it's going to be a little bit more detail difficult to do details with. Uh, so something like a, a sheep's foot blade will work, uh, but this is a, a pretty blunt tip that just makes it a little bit a little bit tougher. And then the last thing I'll recommend is a straight cutting edge. And right now I'm going to say that uh, is because I think it's easier to control than an upsweep uh, when you're starting to learn. That might feel odd to you if you've never whittled before, uh, that you're looking for one with a straight cutting edge. But I think that's an easier starting point, especially for doing details with that tip, which I think is just a little bit more challenging on an upsweep. But it also makes a difference when you're sharpening, which brings us to the second thing we want to talk about and how to look, what to look for, which is that you want a knife that's easy to sharpen. You say, well, how do I know if my knife is going to be easy to sharpen? Well, a couple things. First, you want to make sure that it comes sharp right out of the box. You want a knife that when you buy it, it is sharp and it slides through the wood really well. If you know you got a, knife, a sharp knife to start with, then you know that uh, all you have to do is keep it sharp. If you buy a whittling knife and it doesn't come sharp, you bought a chore, not a hobby. None of us got into this because we said, hey, my new hobby is going to be sharpening knives. Uh, probably you're getting into it because you're excited about whittling and sharpening your knife is a side question. The other thing that uh, you want to look for is you're looking for something with high carbon steel. 
and you'll read that in the specifications and that just means that it's steel with a higher carbon content that steel is going to be a little bit easier for you to sharpen and it's going to get sharper than other types of steel so you're not looking for a stainless steel blade you're looking for a high carbon blade that means it might be a little bit more prone towards um, rust or corrosion but i have never had an issue with any of my <laughs> high carbon whittling knives um, in that way if that if that's a concern uh, another thing to, to think about, which you don't really need to know much about as a beginner, is the Rockwell hardness. And for most wheeling knives, you'll see something in the range of 58 to 62 for that. The next thing that you're looking for is uh, something with a flat grind. So the flat grind means that that tip, if we look at um, the tip here, it's coming to a... a one angle from the spine all the way down to the cutting edge on both sides. So the tip of it looks like this. Okay, that's a flat grind. A lot of knives, and actually I'm going to show you one exception here on the flex cut, a lot of knives have what's called a Scandi grind where it comes down straight and then it comes to a point. And you can have a hollow grind and all kind of other grinds. That's a Scandi grind, uh, excuse my handwriting and my spelling, uh, but you're looking for something with a flat grind. The reason is because a flat grind is going to be easier for you to sharpen. Okay, and then the last thing is that you're looking for something with a straight cutting edge, um, and we already talked about that a little bit, but I'll show you the reason that you want a flat grind and a straight cutting edge is when you sharpen it on the strop, and I have a separate video where we'll talk about that, you can really pretty much just lay it flat on there. There's some exceptions to that, but it makes it much, much easier for you. You're probably uh, sharpening for the first time. It gives you a good way to hold that completely flat, get the right angle, uh, and again, that there, there's some variations on that. You might not always want to hold it completely flat, but uh, but the flat grind is going to make it easier for you. So that's what makes it easy to sharpen. Next, we want to talk about handle comfort. Now, this is a little more difficult because it's going to be a little bit uh, subjective. There are all sorts of different handle shapes that you might uh, see in whittling knives that you might uh, think about. So. Things that I look for in a handle for myself is that I want it to be larger down on the bottom because I want it to rest really comfortably down in my palm there when I'm making larger, longer cuts. I also want something that's tapered towards the front that I can pinch well between my thumb and forefinger if I'm doing um, smaller things up there um, or even choke up uh, further on it, right? But that's something that I've figured out over time. If you watch my overview video, uh, you'll see that I actually um, got a, a really nice knife early on and I got a handle that I wasn't crazy about because I just didn't know what I didn't know. So if you don't know, uh, I, would, I would experiment with different knives you can get your hands on. You might not be able to get your hands on any of these, but um, uh, the flex cut is a little bit unique. You're going to have to figure out if that's a preference or not for you, if that works for you. Um, but I would suggest things like this. Um, this deep holler knife, uh, standard knife shape, is pretty universal. It's going to work well. Um, this is a, a pretty standard shape from, from OCC Tools. Uh, an oval shape is always a good option. There's an oval-shaped handle, and a lot of knife makers make oval-shaped handles. That's pretty pretty general. So if you have an idea, uh, if, if you don't have an idea, I'd, I'd recommend um, not taking any huge risks on that. And in my overview videos, I do do some care comparisons of widths. So that's a really wide um, knife handle from Drake. If you have really small hands, that might be more of a concern for you. Uh, but... All of that is up to your preference in the in the handle style. Uh, the other thing to, to look for in the handle, though, not just necessarily the grip, is that uh, it doesn't get in the way of the blade, both when you're carving and when you're sharpening. So you can see on this flex cut knife, there's a great angle up here right up to the blade. And then there's also this little dip called a choil that separates the the blade from the handle that gives you space to keep the handle both away from the carving while you're carving so it's not butting up against there and it also um, helps you when you're when you're sharpening 
this deep holler knife has an excellent um, taper towards the front and that does the same kind of thing for you. Uh, in contrast, I can show you a knife here where the handle is really wide and the blade is really small and this knife kind of drives me nuts because when I make cuts like this the handle is literally butting into the wood uh, it's in the way and uh, I don't like that I don't want my handle in my way when I'm cutting <laughs> so those are things to look for in your handle so the last thing I'm going to talk about under um, what to look for is actually things to avoid so things that you don't want to look for or don't want to get in your first whittling knife. Um, and I've mentioned the opposite of some of the things we've talked about, but uh, you don't want an overly delicate knife. So a knife that's going to be too small, this is an excellent knife. Uh, but a knife that's too small, too narrow is going to be a little bit harder to... Uh, uh, for you not to chip or break, and everybody chips or breaks a knife eventually, that's okay. But you want to start with one that's not too too small or delicate. Uh, you don't want to start with a general pocket knife. I love pocket knives. I love taking pocket knives and flicking them around and playing with them and chopping up wood in my yard and opening Amazon boxes like I'm a pro. But uh, for whittling, they're generally not uh, going to be sharp enough, and they're also going to have a really, really wide blade. Uh, on most pocket knives. Now, there are some pocket knives that um, that you can modify to be good whittlers. So you can take some of these knives and you can modify them and sharpen them. Actually, um, Swiss Army knives work really well as whittlers, uh, but they're going to take a little bit more work potentially. And as a beginner, that's not something that you necessarily want to worry about. The other thing you want to avoid, I already talked about, is stainless steel. And then the last thing I'm going to say is you want to avoid overly cheap knives, which means that you're not going to just go to your um, big box hobby store or wherever and buy the cheapest whittling knife you can find. The steel is probably not going to be very good. The quality is not going to be great. Um, so I should make a side note here because I already pulled this one out. This is a Beavercraft knife. Um, and if you search Amazon, Beavercraft will come up and a lot of people use them. And if you are looking for an option that is between 10 and $15, uh, it's probably the best option that you have in that price range. I would argue that paying a little bit more for the flex cut is going to be worth your money. Uh, but, uh, what you'll know if you get a Beavercraft knife is that it is sharp. It is very thick. The blades tend to be on the thick side, and they do not hold an edge as long as any of the other knives that I've that I've shown you or talked about. Um, I find that they lose an edge faster than any of the other knives that I have. Now, of course, that makes sense. They're 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 a cheaper knife, and I would argue that spending a little bit more is going to get you a little bit further down the road with a flex cut knife. I'd recommend that. Beavercraft are a great company. They're very nice. Um, and there are different Beavercraft products that I like more. Uh, if you do buy a Beavercraft knife, this one on the right, look for the one that looks like this. Um, because the handle comes in better. There's a larger choil. It's up away. It doesn't have the same handle problems that this one does, but it's still going to be pretty thick and, uh, uh, lose its edge a lot quicker than the other knives that I'm that I'm recommending today. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is look at uh, three specific recommendations knives that I can tell you um, will meet the criteria and be a good be a good beginner knife for you. And it's not going to come to a shock as a shock because I've had them sitting out here this whole time. So let's start with the the budget option, uh, which is the flex cut knives. And I'm going to put a couple of these out here. Um, the the flex cut knives will usually cost you twenty to twenty five U.S. dollars, um, and they're not terribly difficult to find, which makes them a great option. Uh, they come sharp consistently. You will know you have a knife sharp a sharp knife from flex cut when you get it, which is which is great, and that's that gets you halfway there. Uh, they're fairly narrow blades uh, and work well. Even that roughing knife on the, the on the right is 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 pretty narrow. And uh, if you if you get one, this is a one and a half inch knife. It's called their detail knife. Comes to a point, does all of those things. There's one exception on this knife um, on all of these flex cut knives is that um, they're not a full flat grind. Uh, that's okay 
uh, I, I said that a flat grind is easier to sharpen. That's true, but it's not difficult to find the right angle when you're sharpening the flex cut knives um, on that bevel, and they, they do okay. Um, I tend to really like their roughing knives more than their detail knives um, because I think um, with that extra bevel, it, it, it doesn't matter as much uh, for roughing. But uh, these are these are good knives. They'll serve you well. They'll get you going well at a, at a reasonable part price point that's a little bit easier to find. Two quick notes on that. One is that um, you can sometimes get uh, a set where these three knives come together. Um, this is called their roughing knife, their cutting knife, and their whittling knife. I'm not huge. Uh, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of the cutting knife in the middle here. It's not that it's not sharp. Um, it works fine, but that that tip is a little more blunt. It's harder to do detail work with. Um, and if you have these other two, there's not much of a reason to need this one. But it's not a bad kit if 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 that's something that that you're that you're considering. Uh, the other thing I'll note is that if you really do want that form factor of a folding knife, uh, then what I would recommend to you is this uh, detail jack from FlexCut. And uh, this has got a detail blade that's very similar, a little bit different, but very similar in size and shape to uh, the detail knife with the, with the fixed handle. And it's actually a great little knife. I, I like this one a lot. I take it with me for um, traveling or just having it in my pocket when I want something to carve. Uh, it's nice that it locks, which I think is essential in a, um, in a folding knife for whittling. And the handle might be hit or miss for you. I actually think that finger groove, um, it actually works reasonably well for me. So if you really want a folding knife, that's going to be a little bit more expensive, but you want that form factor of something that folds, um, this will meet uh, the requirements that you have. And that's what I would recommend if you're set on a folding knife. So um, we'll go this order. Uh, the next knife that I would recommend would be uh, the OCC knife. And the um, if you watch my overviews, you know that um, I really... Uh, I really cut my teeth with this knife in particular. One and a half inches is, I think, the right size, although you could get a one and a quarter, one and three eighths, one and uh, three quarters, whatever. Um, they have that full flat grind. They're, um, they've are they got a, a, a good, strong back, good for roughing and detailing. The handle is nothing special, but it's, uh, it's, it's functional and it works. Uh, they're a little bit harder to find, and they have had some um, turnover. They were recently sold. Um, I have only gotten good quality sharp knives from them. I've heard some people say they've gotten sh knives that aren't as sharp recently. Um, but, uh, they're easy to sharpen and they stay sharp. If you can find one at a, at a carving store, I would still recommend these as a, as a good, good beginning knife. You'll spend a little bit more in like the $30 range for these, uh, but they're good. They're good knives. And then the last one that I'm going to recommend to you here is a deep holler knife. And uh, these, these run about $40, and you can find them on multiple different carving sites or go to their website. You can see where you can get them. Treeline USA, Mountain Wood Carvers, um, Bigfoot Carving Tools, a number of others. Uh, and these are just really, really good knives. And you might say, well, I don't know if I should spend that much for a knife as a beginner. And I would say if you can, go ahead and do it uh, because the, the quality and... Uh, the ease of use that you're going to get is just, it's going to make it easier for you. It's not that you can't do well with the flex cut tools. The flex cut tools will work, will work fine. And they're, they're a great option. The deep holler knife will hold an edge, um, <laughs> like it's nobody's business. Um, it's got that narrower blade, which is surprisingly strong enough to, um, uh, uh, still do, still do good roughing with and, and great detail and they're available, which is another reason that I would that I would recommend them. As of March 2023, you can find them. So if you're if you're able to spend um, a little bit more, I would encourage you to do that. I do think it's worth it if you're getting into the hobby to have a a tool that you know is going to be sharp, strong, and meet all of those criteria, and that that'll last you. It doesn't have to be just a beginner a beginner knife. So it's something to consider. So. I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, this video. There certainly are other beginner knives out here that would meet the criteria that I shared that I haven't tried yet. 
And so if you, if you have other ones that you like, that's, that's certainly possible. These are three that I have that I would recommend to beginners. And uh, yeah, so happy carving. I hope you can find a knife that you like, and we'll see you in the next video.